Website conversion optimization. You're doing it wrong. Three mistakes to avoid to stop wasting your time and effort. Hi, I'm Chelsea from Tech Diva Media, and I'm going to be covering three major mistakes that I see people making with their website conversion optimization in this video. One, that's following what everybody else does. Two, that's not defining your target customer clearly enough to know how to engage them. And three, it's not testing with your target customers. So who am I? I'm Chelsea from Tech Diva Media. As I said, I'm a web designer with a BFA in graphic design, and I've been building sites for about 12 years, but I've been focused specifically in marketing and been formally trained in marketing for the last seven years. I spent four of those seven years uh, on a man named Evan Pagan's team, and he's a uh, kind of a guru in the world of online marketing. And as such, I coached over 200 people on their online marketing strategies from improving their existing websites to developing Facebook ad campaigns to writing email sales funnels. In the past three years, I've been focused specifically on conversion optimization. And now what that means is that I research your market and competition and a design based on your customer, and I help you craft the content to really connect with them. Now what makes us different is that when we build a site, we really work with clients over the long term to not only launch a site, but also to test it and to go back to update it, etc. So it's kind of over the long term. And I work with clients both on their website as well as their lead generation strategy, which is all really just a big part of conversion optimization as a whole. So we focus on serving companies that have an existing site and offerings and are generally spending more than 1500 bucks a month on their marketing. And they're usually too busy to... Um, you know, really take the time to focus on the latest web trends or get into creating split tests and analyzing data about their customers. You know, the people that I work with are usually just really busy serving their clients and their customers. Um, but they know they need to strengthen their lead generation strategy and do things like building a mailing list or writing emails that their customers actually want to open. Or maybe it's creating a new kind of front end offering that leads to a higher end uh, product in the back end. Or maybe it's publishing a book to establish credibility in their field. So usually it's companies that are kind of already doing okay, but they can't seem to get above the sort of glass ceiling that they've hit with their marketing and the number of customers that they're serving. And they're really trying to branch out and go deeper or go farther. And so everything I've learned about marketing is from these people and their courses, their blogs, their podcasts, and their books. Um, as I said, I work for Evan Pagan. I've been trained by Evan Pagan. And I also love Ramit Seti, Noah Kagan, Neil Patel, Frank Kern, Dan Kennedy, Tim Ferriss, the I Love Marketing Podcast, Conversion Excel blog. There's tons of these guys that I've followed for years, and I highly recommend if this is interesting to you, check out any one of them or all of them, um, because you'll find so much of the information that they cover extremely valuable. Um, whether you have a, a BFA, or not a BFA, a business degree, um, if you have a degree in marketing or you've never touched marketing, you'll find, I think, a lot of what they share is really applicable and practical information. It's like real world stuff. It's like street smarts around marketing. So let's get back to the mistakes. Mistake number one is following what everyone else does. So we see so many ads and websites on a daily basis, we kind of naturally assume that they probably have it figured out. So we might as well just model them and make our own that looks like theirs, right? Um, but the problem with this is that almost everybody is doing that. Most people actually don't know what works with marketing. And if they do know what works, you actually can't be certain what is working and if it will work with your audience because your specific audience or where your target prospect is starting to engage with you, all of, you don't know exactly what it is that's working with someone else that may be different with you. And so it's really hard to pinpoint it. And you got to assume that you don't really know what's working if you do see a company that's being successful with their marketing because you just don't have a lot of background data about how much money they're spending in their marketing, what avenues they're using to reach their customers, um, what other offers they have for their customers. There's just so much that comes into play with really converting someone from being a prospect into a customer that it's hard to know just from first glance if a certain commercial or a website is really effective. And that's kind of what most people do. They see something and they model it because it's a lot of work to try to go sort through and figure that out and test all these different things and try different things over time. Now the second mistake is not defining your target customer clearly enough to know how to engage them. Now this kind of helps with mistake number one because when you know your customer clearly enough it makes it a hell of a lot easier. You don't have to model other people. You can design based on what you know your target customer is looking for. 
And how do you know where to reach your audience? You, you know that by determining who you're speaking to specifically. And how do you effectively explain the benefits of what you're offering by knowing who you're talking to and what they want? So for instance, if you're marketing to women, say ages typically 25 to 35, that's a certain kind of woman that's probably shopping at a certain place. When she's online, she's probably looking at certain websites. She has a certain circle of friends that she likely um, you know, hangs out with and they all respect her for certain things. She might dress a certain way. She might buy certain products. She might have kids. She might not. She might have a certain kind of career path. She's a totally different customer than a woman that's 65 and is newly retired, no longer has kids at home, surfs the internet all the time, but goes to completely different websites, is looking for a completely different benefit or result, dresses differently, invests her money differently, has a different probably amount of money to invest. That's a totally different person. And when you're speaking to them and you're trying to reach them, especially online, you're going to be going at it from totally different angles based on the customer. So it means you haven't changed. It means the way you're reaching that customer and the way you're explaining your benefits changes based on who that customer is. So if you aren't clear on the age, the location, the socioeconomic status, the life stage, the career path, and the multiple competitor options available to your customer, you're just not going to know how to connect with them and really build trust with them in a, in a manner that's going to get you a, a sale, basically. Mistake number two, or mistake number three, is not testing with your customers. So you put up a site, you create an email campaign, you launch a product, but do you test it? Now the problem is there's no way you can actually know what works when, and what you actually need to focus on to grow effectively if you don't analyze your results and test them. So what you think looks or sounds great can be entirely different to your customer. I have learned this over and over again, trying to assume that I know what's gonna work with a particular audience, but I don't really know until I set up split testing. So I might think a certain image is gonna work better with an audience and then I split test it and I realize that that image definitely didn't win and the silly cat image won over, you know? Like you just really don't know until you test. And if you do have a successful offering or launch or whatever, but you're not exactly sure what it was that compelled people to engage with you or to buy from you, then it's really hard to know how to market in the future. So you sort of end up kind of not being sure about the next time you try to launch or when you go out to sell your product more or grow bigger, you're not exactly sure what to emphasize because you're not exactly sure what worked in the past. So it's really important to test so that you know what works. So there's a lot more things to consider with your website optimization, like where's your prospect coming from? Where, what do they see first if they land on your site or your landing page? What other options do they have available to solve this issue that they're coming to you for? How can you bundle your offerings or maybe structure your products differently to serve their different needs? How do you build trust and credibility with your prospect, especially instantly if they're coming to your, your website? Have you made an offer they can't refuse? You know, Do you have a guarantee or do you have something, a bonus or something that just makes it so juicy they can't refuse it? Or what would their friends or spouse or parents or colleagues think if they purchased your product or service? Would they want to share it with them? I mean, would they share on Facebook that they purchased something or they use your service or would they talk about it to their friends? And tons more, but you start to get the idea of how important it is to start to consider all these factors when you get into conversion optimization and really making your website work for you or your email campaign or your product offerings, for instance. If you enjoyed this and you want to find out a little bit more about conversion optimization or you want to contact me, you can check out my website at techdivamedia.com or you can subscribe to my channel where I have a lot of reviews and other topics that I discuss around website conversion optimization. I hope you like this video. I so appreciate you watching and please leave a comment if you feel compelled. Thanks so much.